morning, everyone. I'm Oleg. This is uh, Violin Bootcamp, and this is our third and the last video on the subject of tension, big bad tension. Uh, if you saw my first two videos, you probably remember this picture of this uh, deranged cat. So you know how bad tension is. So we're not going to go there. We are going to talk about the ways of minimizing the tension and minimizing the damage we're doing to our bodies. And by the way, this damage we have to thank our ancestors. And because at some point, you know, when we were designed, in accordance to the laws of nature, gravity, mass, uh, um, force, uh, acceleration, inertia, and all of this, we were designed as a physical objects to uh, move efficiently and to function efficiently under those conditions, as any animal, bird or fish. But at some point, we said to our folks, no, I'm not going to do, uh, I'm not going to be what you want me to be, I'm different, I'm special. And so, we transferred ourselves from this horizontal position to the vertical position. You know, horizontal position is perfect for our backs, because it's like a bridge with four pillars. It's perfect, there are no stress points. And uh, every engineer will tell you that, and every osteopath will tell you that, by uh, transferring this structure to the vertical position, we created a lot of stress points, we created a lot of problems and myriads of different diseases, and osteopaths are pretty happy. Because if we didn't do that, there would be no need for osteopaths. Anyway, I'm not going to criticize um, our ancestors for what they did. This is, we are where we are. There is nothing we can do about this. I just make one point, though. As a result of all those changes, many, many centuries later, we have a species, us. We are practically not able to perform most of our basic functions without the help of external physical devices. Just think about this. We cannot sit without chairs. We cannot work or eat without tables. We cannot sleep without uh, pillows, you know, supporting our hands. We're like invalids. We, 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 we depend on, on, on those devices. Take all of this and we, well, we'll be very uncomfortable. Anyway, as I said, I'm not here to criticize. Uh, we are here to uh, minimize the damage. And we start with uh, general posture. If you hear one of those internet teachers who tell you that you uh, have to uh, transfer your weight uh, to the left foot and that your left foot has to be slightly, uh, slightly ahead, run, just run. And if this teacher is in a physical proximity, smack him on the head and repeat as many times as necessary. We have to be absolutely centered so the weight distribution has to be 50-50. Our feet has to be symmetrical. So basically that is the width of our two feet and we have to place them in this position uh, resembling this V letter. Why? Because if you extend those lines, it will form a part of a triangle. And triangle is the most stable geometrical uh, structure in one dimension. And that's exactly what we need. So that position provides the maximum stability while allowing the maximum flexibility with everything which is sitting on top of this. Let's go up. Well, we have a few joints which connect our feet and ankles and, um, and knees. And then we are arriving at a very important stress point in this structure, which is our backside. Sorry for being so um, you know, graphic. Our backside is very important. One thing I have to tell you, please, 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 please do not sit. When you practice, when you perform, try not to sit. This is one of the worst things you can do to yourself. And I'm sorry to uh, those of you who uh, play in the orchestras. Well, 
all I can recommend is that move as much as possible. And I'll tell you why. Well, there are medical reasons why sitting is not good for blood circulation and for, for certain internal organs, but for the violin players. You see, we have to have very strong connection to the ground, but all the rest, we have to be completely flexible. We have to be able to move, to turn, uh, you know, to, be, uh, to flex as much as possible. And if you look at our uh, bodies, how many uh, flexible points we have, quite few of them are below our waistline. And so when you sit, you practically canceling all those um, moving flexible, flexible points. So you only are left with your spine and everything here. Which are, and, and trust me, all those muscles and joints, they have enough to do and to take care of. So you basically um, canceling about 60-70% of uh, flexibility of your body when you sit down. Then let's go up. Our general spine. Well, it has a couple of natural curves anyway. Uh, but uh, this, those discs, they are built into, this, uh, into those curves. So uh, you should not really try to be as straight as an arrow because it's not going to work. But you have to maintain those two natural curves and not, not exaggerate those curves. Because it's very simple. You have two vertebrae and then you have a disc. And in a natural uh, state, the um, pressure on the disc is equal. You know, when you slouch, when you move on the left, on the right, um, there's much more pressure on one side of the disc. And those discs are um, very easy to damage. And the problem is that your muscles uh, have an open line of communication with your brain. So there's a constant exchange of signals. And there's a lot of nerve endings and pain receptors. So when your muscle is getting tired, it immediately goes, Mommy, I'm tired, Mommy, I'm tired, I'm tired, do something. Then what we do, we transfer the responsibility. So we relax this mu muscular structure and we let all the weight to be supported by the discs and, uh, and, and bones. And the thing is that discs, because they are much deeper inside um, our body, they don't have so many pain receptors. They don't report uh, to the brain that there is a problem. That's it. So we are causing damage to the discs and to the muscles around. But then when we uh, uh, actually start feeling pain, that means that w that's basically, that's too late. That this is a time for medication, this is time for surgery, this is time for visit, uh, osteopath uh, visit. That means that there is a problem. So we have a conscious choice or, or having little discomfort of um, having our muscles toned, which actually is quite easy because you, you just need to do that for maybe two, three weeks to constantly re remind yourself that your muscles have to be uh, in a slightly um, not really tense position. They will get used to that very fast. Uh, this is one choice. So you have to deal with this little discomfort or you have no discomfort at all because you just let all the weight slump. And, uh, but then you will have a problem in half a year or year or two, but then you have a big problem. Then you have a structural problem. And then you might have a problem which is a chronic problem which will haunt you to the rest of your days. Like it does with me, for example, and with 70% uh, of adult uh, males and females on this planet. Okay, next stage. This is another uh, stress point in, in the whole structure. Very important point, because we have neck and shoulder muscles. Very often you can see people, especially men, walking with their shoulders closed with their uh, you know, ribs compressed with their head, uh, because it is easier, but you can't imagine what it really means. First of all, in a natural world, in a, uh, in a, instinctively, we might not realize that, but 
when you feel uh, danger, you close in order to protect your internal organs, your heart, your lungs, your head. Don't tell me about your head because our heads are very well protected. Please believe me. Um, because this skull can deflect practically everything. Uh, why, do, why do you think boxers wear gloves? To protect their hands? Of course. It's not to protect the, you know, the, the head of your opponent. No, this head is protected pretty well. So, no, uh, this is a part of the protection. You know that there's a dirty trick in street fighting. When, when you see the fist coming your way, you just uh, put your head down and let him hit you in the head. They will break their arm or, uh, you know, fist will be broken. So, uh, we do this in order to protect our internal organs and we do that if there is a danger and we all know what happens with our nervous system uh, when there is a feeling of danger. So, again, we are on this red line. Then there's another thing happens when you compress your rib cage, your lungs are compressed as well, which means that your capacity to get full, um, full amount of oxygen is limited. And, uh, and then, of course, there is uh, extreme tension on, 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 on those parts. Um, so, the first, uh, the, the only thing I can tell you, first, you have to be open. You have to have your shoulders as low and as far back as possible, even from the energetic point of view. Uh, like every uh, body language uh, specialist or every uh, police uh, investigator or interrogator will tell you that that means that I'm closed. I'm closed energetically. I don't want to receive anything and I'm not going to give anything. I'm not going to. I'm closed for communication. This is a very, very, very clear sign of total, total separation. And as a musician, no, no, it's not good because we give and we receive. So we have to be open. Now, I shoulders. This is a common problem. Every day I look at uh, kids who go from the school and uh, when they are not typing their Instagram things and when they are not uh, doing this kamikaze act by jumping under the uh, wheels of, of, of cars, uh, what they do, most of them, they carry their rucksacks on, on one shoulder. Not just that. 90% uh, of the people you can see on the street, they all carry bags or shopping bags or violin players would all do this. This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. That results in this constant tension right here. You might think muscle is a soft tissue. Uh -huh. When muscle is contracted, it actually it can dislocate the joint, any joint. Because muscles there also, um, they have few different functions, but one of the functions of uh, musculature is to protect our internal organs. So they can be stronger than our bones. So uh, you can't imagine what an enormous uh, amount of tension and force can muscle in a state of distress can produce. So that results in a pinched nerves, that results in our uh, joint being dislocated, and that results in a toothache, uh, in an earache, in headache, in a, and go on forever. Now, our head, under no circumstances, adjust your body to the violin. Because we already have quite uh, a natural um, position of our arms and our heads. No. You wouldn't walk around uh, your room like this. So then why would you play like this? Sometimes they say, oh, look at the direction of... No, please don't. This is your natural position. This is the most, well, under circumstances, uh, the least harmful uh, position of your, of your head. So this is how you're going to play. What is very important, you have to set up your violin and this is, uh, this is something which causes a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of problems. Uh, incorrect setup. Because the combined height, you can say, of the violin, the body of the violin, the shoulder rest and chin rest, 
has to be exactly this. Absolutely. Not a millimeter less. Because the worst thing you can do to yourself, if you have this setup, less than this distance, in which case, what you do? You support your violin with your shoulder. Very bad. You support your violin by letting your this object, which is very heavy, slightly press on on uh, on the chin rest. So you actually use the force of gravity, and then when you put your violin, it has to be inserted like like this, like you know, like Tetris, and then. You have to make sure that your uh, shoulder is completely down and it has to be very tight so you can uh, uh, keep your violin uh, here without um, using your hands and arms, without your head turned on the left or tilted in any way. So that is your position. Don't change the geometry. Don't adjust yourself to the violin. Violin has to be adjusted to you, 100%. So, well, we went through the most kind of basic uh, steps of our posture. Hand positions, this is a completely different story. If you, uh, if you have any questions, if you want to know more about hand positions or if you have any issues, uh, technical issues or creative issues without your playing, without the violin, without the violin setup or um, anything to do with your hands or body parts which do not want to perform as they should be, you're welcome to go to my Patreon page and we have the um, Q&A session. Ask your question and uh, I will answer it. And if you have a problem, we will sort this problem. We can do it online, by Skype or video link, or uh, you can take an airplane and come to Dublin, or, well, whatever suits. In any case, thank you very much. I hope that you have been entertained, and I wish you a full and beautiful and long creative life, and um, I will see you shortly. All the best.